look what you just accomplished. Look at the connection that you just made with your partner. Those are moments why I do what I do, why we do what we do here. My name is Marit Hansen. I am the Executive Director and Founder of Healing Horse Therapy Center. I am um, also a past certified therapeutic riding instructor and I'm a past certified equine specialist in mental health and learning and I'm also a Special Olympics equestrian coach. Healing Horse Therapy Center was founded as part of a vision of mine of wanting to create a safe, serene environment and nurturing environment for those who need to come for healing and wellness. The different programs that we provide here are equine facilitated psychotherapy and learning, therapeutic riding, sibling bonding program, which is a brand new program that we started, and our Horses for Veterans Horsemanship and Wellness program. The horses here, they partner and become a part of these programs. We couldn't do the program without the horses that we have here. They are amazing. Every single one of them is amazing. There have been miracles that have happened. And that's not because of me again, it's because of them. It really truly becomes an intuitive thing. The horses know. I won a lot, and I've been champion at the Garden like four or five times. I was champion at Harrisburg, Washington, Devon Horse Show, Upperville, you name it, I won it. <laughs> when I first met Rob, he was in a hospice bed in his living room, and the doctors had sent him home and told his parents to put his affairs in order. I don't remember having a stroke for about six months. I had no idea. Thought I was fine. So when they did a brain scan, the doctor said to me that it came back very poorly and that I was to take him home and make him comfortable, as Donna said, and um, that he would only have two weeks to live. And I felt it. I truly felt it in my heart and in my soul that I was going to heal my son. It's very challenging for somebody like Rob, who's used to being able to do anything and be a champion to not being able to be mobile and to not be able to accomplish the things that he wants to accomplish. Um, and he's used to seeing results right away and this has been a long process. Yeah. And that's been very challenging for him to accept that, but he still does it. And now that he's here with Mered and with Stacy, every time he rides this therapy, you see the difference, what they're doing with him. It's just amazing with his core, his upper body, his strength. It's an amazing, this is just amazing. We're, this is another gift in our life is to meet Stacy and Mered. My name is Stacy Brown. I'm a physical therapist from Portland, Oregon. I became certified to treat um, therapeutic riders um, in Florida and that's been a very interesting thing for me. I've uh, had a background with horses my whole life and really enjoyed them, rode them and when I investigated the idea of working with a disabled population with, with horses it was fascinating so I, I got certified to do that. The physical benefit is that when a, a, a rider is on a horse they are asked to move in concert with the horse's movements and so sometimes when people have uh, injuries that are neurological what will happen is that their their motor planning skills are not good their balance and coordination are not good um, they they've lost that synchronicity and somehow the movement of the horse that timing that rhythm brings that back and helps the rider to reestablish that within their own neurological system his love of the horses and and watching Murat and Stacy um, work with him I could <laughs> you could see how happy he was to be on the horse again he really looked forward to coming here 
and his progress has just been amazing since he started here. <laughs> what's your uh, What's your favorite part about being out here and doing this? I just like to ride. I'm so proud of him because he fights through everything, like I had said before, and the determination is endless. And I'm just so proud of him. I'm so proud he's my son. As a nonprofit, we rely heavily on volunteers. We cannot do what we do and provide a safe environment if we did not have our volunteers. When the volunteers come here, I don't think they know what to expect. Once they become involved and start understanding what we do here, I think it becomes just as important for them to be a part of this. My name is Mary Ann Mora, and I'm originally from Titusville, Florida. I've been volunteering here for a little less than a year, and I do a lesson, at least one or two lessons with her on Saturdays. Then when I'm not involved directly in her lessons, I do whatever chores are needed around the barn. I um, fill water buckets, I wash horses, pick the stalls, sweep the barn, and just really whatever it takes to um, help her on a Saturday. Why I wanted to help Marette specifically is because um, my son's involved in her program and I really believe in, in what she's doing here. What I find beneficial about volunteering here, you know, it teaches me uh, to give uh, of myself, of my time. When you volunteer, you always see the goodness in other people and the goodness in what, what the program and the center is providing. I benefit from that. You, you do get more than you give. This is hard work here. I mean, you're sweating, you're getting dirty, you're lifting and pulling. and <laughs> It's hard work. Um, but I enjoy it. I really do. And um, you do feel that appreciation and that that love comes back to you. Texas where I graduated high school, you either go to college or you stay and pretty much work on a ranch or a farm or go to the military. So my, uh, my choice was the military. So basically I spent my whole Navy career with, with the Marine Corps as a Navy corpsman. Uh, I was involved with the Desert Storm, Desert Shield. So I had a total of probably 16 years total of military service. You're, you're under a stress while you're in Iraq um, or Afghanistan, anywhere, that it's it's a common stress. Everybody's under it. You're you're nervous. You got you, but you're thinking about the the mission, if you will. Then you go through a stage where you're you're getting what they call demobed or demobilized. You're coming home. You know you're pretty much the date that you're coming home, and you're excited. Then the there's a part where the honeymoon's over, if you want to call it that and uh, you, you, your body doesn't adjust and your mind doesn't adjust back to civilian life. Your friends are different, your, um, your temperament's different, things are, are not the same, uh, but your family starts to notice it. You know, the way your tone, the way you talk, your, your uh, temperament, the way you deal, interact with other people. Like, I, I didn't want to be around anybody. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want to be in grocery stores around a crowd. So my family saw me in a light that, uh, you know, it was like a flare. It just would snap at different triggers, different times. You, you don't hear about horse therapy. You've never, I've never heard of it before, you know? Um, you hear about going to a, a counselor or a psychiatrist or a shrink. Um, and it appealed to me because I love horses. I've grew up with them pretty much all my life. So I thought it would be a great 
thing that we could do together as a couple. The first thing we did is introduce ourselves to our horses. You know, they introduced themselves to us. And that was our partner. You didn't look at them as a, as a you know, a tool. They were, they were an integral part of our therapy. And so every uh, time we got together, we got our horse and then we would take care of them. We would groom them. And this is every single time, it was an expectation. The, the thing I love about the horses is that they um, take you as you are. They accept you as you are. And my horse, um, every time I came, he, he would mirror how I was feeling that day. My attitude, if I was agitated, if I was uh, happy or whatever it was. So if you were anxious and mad or whatever, they would react to how you were. So. Uh, in a non-verbal way, they would um, teach you about yourself. Joanne and I's uh, communication was better. I think that we, our marriage, definitely started to go on an uphill swing. Um, it really, really changed our lives and our marriage. Just in the fact that the lessons that we learned were uh, listening and communicating. Well, just like with the horses, you can't just bum rush a horse and start grabbing them and doing stuff and expecting them to uh, do what you want, you know, and just being able to breathe and listen helped tremendously. And I think that it should be uh, yelled from a mountaintop that this place is here uh, because it, it helps. Nothing's more important than your family. And that's what broke me and that's what uh, got me to come. And I'm do it a thousand times over and uh, I'm glad that I did. So. Our uh, third son is Levi. We knew, I knew immediately, that something was different. We discovered after a pretty long journey to find out what it was, and, and pretty soon it was, you know, that he was Asperger's, and he was on the autism spectrum. And um, then what to do about it, what to do about it. He. He couldn't connect. He just could not connect with us, with people, with siblings, with his pets, uh, with much of anything. He did not connect. The rest of our boys were very, very emotional, very social, very loving. And when you don't have that emotional connection with your child, it's difficult. Um, and you can't, you can't connect with them on an emotional level. Um, you feel like you don't know them and, and you want that so badly. We came to Healing Horse. Uh, I had heard about her wonderful horses and, and I just thought this is something. I, I want to investigate this for Levi and see how he reacts with the horses. And Moret started telling me about the sibling bonding program. That is addressing a need that is so important right now because there's all kinds of therapies. The person who is in need of the therapy goes and gets the therapy and the sibling sits in the waiting room. And so we started that very next week and it was wonderful. Immediately they started grooming the horses. They didn't get to ride right away. And what I saw, they were just side by side. Jacob with Polaris and Levi with Butterball. And what amazed me is that Levi was not hesitant in any way, but there was a confidence 
And that is so unusual for anyone, especially someone on the spectrum, especially for someone with Asperger's. Marette Hansen with Healing Horse. As far as I'm concerned, uh, she's a miracle worker. <laughs> and she thought of the most wonderful um, idea and needed idea, which is the sibling bonding program. But oftentimes it's the sibling who gives in, makes concession, and they do it so beautifully. The sibling bonding program includes them and it makes them a very important part of the family. I can't tell you how thankful I am that I found that uh, for Jacob, my little sibling of the spectrum, um, and for our entire family because the bonding of the brothers and the bonding of our family and uh, Jacob's well-being, the family's well-being, Levi's well-being, it's, um, it's all encompassing and it's priceless. This has been truly a passion of mine and a calling. When I decided that I really wanted to do this work and bring this into a more therapeutic environment, I knew that the horses were going to be such a major part of this, but not just because of somebody being put on their back. I knew it was going to be deeper than that, and it had to be deeper than that. Because in order to be able to touch someone, they have to be able to have that connection to help them go on with their healing, whatever that healing is. It's just what I believe is part of why I'm here.